I've been involved with King since 1984, when we went to Hawaii to do our first school that was called the Small Half Foundation Training School. And since that time, we have been involved with King's Kids. First, we were involved in starting King's Kids in Switzerland, and after that, in Europe. So we have been, we've had many friends that we've met and people that we've worked with over the last 33 years. It's been a very good time, and God has really blessed us. From the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, we read how God has a plan to bless his creation and to bless all people and to save a world that is in trouble. And as King's Kids, I feel we are the ones that are part of that in his history to do our little part and bring salvation, first of all, to our own personal lives and to our families, but beyond that, to the people around us. My life has been greatly influenced by the decision of one man. Our family was a family where poverty, alcoholism and depression had a say. All of my ancestors were in deep debt, were bound to powers that made life very difficult. My great-grandfather was a chimney sweeper and he would go from village to village sweeping the chimneys and drinking strong alcohols at the end of every farm. So he would be often so drunk that he couldn't even walk home at night. My grandfather would go and look for him in the streets. One night he found him on the side of a street in the gutter, sleeping. He couldn't walk. My grandfather laid down to him and slept with him during the night. One night in the attic, my grandfather found the book, The Family Bible, and he read that and he said, if this is true, if there is freedom, I want to become a Christian. And so he decided, all by himself, in that little attic to follow the Lord. From that decision, many good things have come. My father is a missionary, I'm a missionary, and now my children are missionaries on their own. Three generations of people have come who serve the Lord and who want to bring the good news to their generation. The decision of one man has greatly influenced our history. I'm always blessed and touched when young people recognize that they need to bring their heart in order and when they're listening to the Lord about what he's saying to them when they're asking the Holy Spirit to shine into their lives and to bring things into order because I think there's no greater power than the power of forgiveness and the way that we've been freed from our sins so I'm so blessed when I see young people instead of trying to justify instead of trying to make excuses when they take responsibility for a wrong action, for a bad word, for an attitude, and they receive the power, the light of the Holy Spirit to shine on that part of their lives and then to bring that into order. I think this is a transforming power. This power that comes from the cross when Jesus died for us and paid for everything. And I see so often Christians uh, having a difficult life, they're working hard and the gospel, the good news of the gospel is actually not reaching them personally. And I think we need to personally be re-evangelized and always enjoy the beauty of the gospel that reaches our lives, that frees us so that we don't need to justify ourselves, make excuses or work hard to have a good life. On a bumpy road in Poland, we had the impression that we should teach on the Father Heart of God on the bus. So we shared a few simple thoughts about how God loves each and every one. At the end of our teaching time, we went from row to row and prayed for each one that was wanting to receive prayer. And this one girl asked for prayer and I prayed for her a simple prayer. The next day, she gave a testimony to say that for many, many years, every night, she had dreamt on how she has seen her parents being murdered in war and how she has seen horrible things and every night she would have nightmare. And after that prayer she said, it was my first night without a nightmare. Today this young lady is in a high position in business and she's become free of the nightmares from seeing her family at war being killed. My dream for King's Kids is that we would make decisions every day of our lives. 
that would have a great influ influence on our next generation. And I believe one of the greatest inheritance that we can leave for coming generation is our love for God and our thankfulness. I believe that thankfulness is one of the great um, pieces of inheritance that we can pass on. If generations to come see that we are thankful people, this is going to great, make a great difference in a world that is so captured by consumerism, by a, by a sense of needing to have things. We are here in the garden of Papa Agre. What a wonderful place. Papa Agre has been a great host here in La Sablière, Ivory Coast. And he has offered this place for us to celebrate our 40th anniversary. So preparations are underway just in a few moments. People will gather here from all these different nations. 48 different nations have come here to celebrate the 40th anniversary of King's Kids. And it's going to be a great, colorful festival from people from Kazakhstan to Brazil. There's people here from Africa, from Europe. There are people from Sweden. There are people from England. There are people from the US and South America. And it's going to be a colorful, joyful celebration of God's goodness and generosity towards us. It's such a privilege to serve God together and be, as we say, King's kids, children of the King, or in French, the joy makers, fabricants de joie, bringing joy to his heart.